Right, so there we are on the uh, second match between Rebelikov and the and Zont. Um, hopefully we won't have a disconnect this time. The first time we played uh, uh, we had a disconnection in the game and we had to restart. Uh, unfortunately this connection happened after uh, John had uh, stolen three points of agendas which allowed uh, which made the game at least a tie. So in this matchup we're going to assume that if Rebelico wins it's a tie and we go to the tiebreaker match. Uh, with I me match is coming up. Yeah. options. Uh, uh, let's see what the project happens. I always like having one agenda, that doesn't feel too pressured. Start working towards. And I see they updated the... no, Belikov didn't update his uh, definition. Okay. Decent start. Again, no economy though. Except that compromise employee. Okay, he's going to go straight for a remote. Interesting play there. He's probably going to go Shadow, then Atlas, then yeah, uh, Shadow on the headquarters. It's a decent play, but it leaves his R&D wide open. And if the corporation has an uh, inside job, he's basically giving him a free agenda. Also, he really slows himself down by not playing that hedge fund. Ah, uh, and then of course he'll have to get back up to five to play it. Exactly. But then he does have been stalked royalties, which should give him a little bit of a boost. Alright, uh, correct, correct. Not completely wiped himself out. Yeah. Drawing heavily. So John is completely ignoring him. Ah, oh, he went for diesel, that was why. I suspect he's going to go sure gamble and compromise employee. Ah, he's running, okay. I have to admit, it's hard not to. It's hard to. Because if you run RD, at least you know what's coming up, so you yeah, can yeah. inform your, your decision. Yeah. I mean, he was going to run RD regardless he, this time. And he destroyed so. that melange, which is always good. Now. <laughs> and most likely should gamble. Crashing melange means he can't play it anymore. So. <laughs> Um, it's really good seeing a compromised employee in your opening hand because that card will pay for itself so many times over during the game. Mm. If you play, I think I. I if you got it, if you get it first turn, it's uh, approximately ten credits in total for the game. That's an excellent rate of return, really. Yeah. So why didn't he play the Sur Gamble instead? Uh, trashing Melange Mining Court with his credits from five to four. All right, right. And he ran R and D twice, so his last action he couldn't have taken the money. Mm -hmm. It's okay, because he'll just make the money back on runs with compromised employee, so... Okay, now Rebelvogov can play that ice wall and advance, advance, and he's good to go. Always want to try and over advance Project Atlas, it's, it's so useful to have the power to pull any card. Yeah, I would go like that, I would play that uh, ice wall on top of my Project Atlas, and then uh, advance it. Okay. Oh, okay. That was. A, I was expecting because I, I thought he could go hedge fund. Um, he could hedge fund and then just put one less counter on Project Atlas because having one counter on Project Atlas is still more powerful than none. But mm. also, I like to keep my um, 
Beanstalk Royalty is in my hand until I really need it. First of all, it buffers your agendas, and second, uh, it's really useful to come back after your, your account siphon or something. Yeah. And you go like, uh, yeah, okay, Beanstalk, Credit, uh, Hedge Fund. <sighs> we'll go first point. That, that uh, R&D point, is huh? already hurting. He knows it's R&D is pretty saturated. Yeah, if he hits a theory pointer... I mean, that's the beauty of running R&D, finding an agenda or something you can trash and then just being able to run it straight over again. Yeah, yeah. Well, if he draws a nice now, he's in a pretty good situation because he can uh, uh, play uh, advanced twice and play the dice. Okay. But he's going to see... Um, Ravella Cold Scorched Earth. Mm -hmm. But he's going to get tagged too. But the good news is he's got an extra, extra action left over. So. True, but he's going to be broke. Oh, um, depends on the trace. Yeah, well, no, I mean, um, he didn't reinforce it, okay? I would reinforce it by one. Clicks are usually more, uh, are much more interesting than uh, actions, uh, than credits. So basically, he yeah, here I would just pay three because that saves me. Exactly. Having the exactly. Click click, exactly. If I could just use that click to get one straight back, then so. I would reinforce by one. Always try to trace him. If the, the cost to you is one credit and you have so many, always do it. So, yeah. yeah, obviously he pays there. Yeah. Get two back here. Oh, and yeah, it's good there. Uh, the problem and he's still got that last action. Yeah, exactly. So he can make another run now and see what the uh, remote has, for example. Always trace, always trace. The tempo hit is very big. Mind you, he, now that he's seen that Scorched Earth, he may not want to run the remote solo. I know the Scorched Earth itself won't kill him. Pretty tragic if Belikov drew the second Scorched Earth and you had left a tag over from the run on the remote. <laughs> okay, that's going to R&D most likely. And then two advances and you, you're golden. You have two advancements on your uh, Atlas. And you can look for whatever you need. I have to admit, I always enjoy the early game criminal style, that sort of reckless look at everything, run far. Yeah, yeah. Never quite adapted to a sort of slower, big rig style approach yet, so... John's options here, obviously, you could check the remote, you could check R&D. He's going I see. for the oh, of course. Okay. Now he should really tag him. He even has two credits, so he's going to tag him whatever happens. I mean, Rebellikov has to decide how much money he wants to throw away here, because, you know, account siphon, while it only takes five credits off him... He has, he has ten credits, enough to raise both his eyes on that remote, so he yeah. wants to keep those credits. And uh, he just needs to tag him, he doesn't need to pay anything to tag him. And uh, John is just going to uh, uh, remove the tags afterwards, so... But I noticed Rebellikov hasn't activated Shadow's two credit things. So he's actually got 12 in the moment. Yeah, yeah. No, this, uh, this account siphon is not a problem. It's not a problem at all. Yeah. It would be a problem if he had two account siphons, but not even then, because uh, he would still... One of those account siphons would, uh, because of the two shadows uh, credits, it would be much less of a pain. But no, it's not a biggie. 
I mean, there is that thing about, you know, if you make your opponent go broke with the council item, the reality is even if you keep the tags at the end of your turn, there's not generally speaking, unless they take two credits of trash or resource, there's not much use they're going to be able to make. No, there's no point in him actually uh, wasting all his money. He needs to protect that server. Yeah. Oh. Okay, he hasn't been reinforced. Yeah, yeah, that's the best play. Yeah. No, he forgot, he, forgot, he forgot the compromise employee. Oh, uh, yeah. Mistake there. Yep, he forgot him. Ah, uh, unfortunate. So, down five credits, up ten for John. Obviously, I'm have to spend well, something at the end of those. Unfortunately, it's a tournament game, so he has to pay for his mistakes. Tags. One last action. Um, draw. I think I'd probably draw here. Mm. You don't really want to make a run and you don't really want to take credit because your hand's a bit short. So. <laughs> Here's a snare. And now it's the time to score that uh, Atlas. The funny thing is, he could, he could now. Oh no, he couldn't do that now, but. It's got a delicious that two counters on it, I think. So pull, you could pull the rest of the snares out of his deck and put them in his hand. Quite funny. <laughs> yeah, but oh are... no, but then you have to you have to reveal yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so it's actually quite helpful like this. He's running his hand again, and uh, this. Oh, okay, he's not running his hand. Ah, but as I understand, aren't you allowed to use the um, paid ability on Project Atlas? Before they access, but after they yeah. agree to access, yes, yeah. Yes. You can use it in the dress snare. Uh, now he can run. Uh, oh no, if he runs the saddle, he gets to credit, so he can still use a snare. Hope that HQ run, but seeing as he's still got three clicks left and HQ is pretty much wide open, if we might see that. Here comes the barrier breaker. Yeah, that's all he needs. He just needs to keep running R and D and just type one three pointer and he wants again. Let's see if he's going to run with his last click. Is it some um... No, nah, even if he sees the snare, it's not a big problem. Yeah, because even the snare only reduces it to zero. However, oh, I guess, yeah, he has to, he has to have a sit tag. But even then, Rebellicor can't activate the snare. So. Yeah. so, what I would do now as Rebellicor is maybe look for a melange. And of course, play that Caduceus. Well, for now, I would play that Caduceus and get some money. Make sure my RD is secure. I have to just hope that your R&D can hold up long enough. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there we go. And two credits. I can read, the, I can see the future. <laughs> or oh, you're merely just a great strategist. <laughs> Or decoys. Or decoys for everyone. Very useful. Quite a lot of drawing. Options. Yeah, but some good stuff. So one last action, so we get some money. What's your thoughts on bank job in the current meta? Do you think it's still viable or people should be not using it more? Um I think in, the, in this tournament, for example, it's not viable at all. 
because so many people play uh, has Bayreuth and Wayland. Uh, I think that's a bad move. The runner doesn't really have anything to uh, to get through that. But okay, um, I would say it's a it's a, uh, not very useful because so many people play Wayland and Bayreuth, which actually make big servers and. Um, Against Intek and NBN, it's good. Against these uh, other two uh, factions, not so much. Yeah, however, we have seen a lot of well. However, uh, people don't recognize uh, how many times how you can use that puncture aggressively. In, uh, for example, if the runner, if the corporation has uh, three uh, unrest dice, and for example, you want to run uh, R&D, you play your puncture, you run uh, on a remote. If he doesn't raise that remote, you get your bank jump. If he raises that uh, ice on the remote, then you can probably get into R&D, for example, because he doesn't have money anymore. Yeah, there are so many beautiful ways that criminals can mess with the yeah. corporation's expected economy. Yeah, it's a great way to force the uh, corporation to raise ice in a remote without anything in it. And in places for, where they don't need it. Yeah, yeah. for a, for a, for a, uh, for somebody who wants to waste their money. If you want to keep the corporation poor, it's brilliant. Even if you don't use it. Okay, we're probably going to see a count siphon in the future. Take one Desperado, picked up another. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's okay. He wants to clear his deck, probably. Probably looking for a ninja or something. One credit, okay. But you know, any of those cards could be a um, archer. Okay. And if, you know, if one of those was an archer, I think you can use the Project Atlas token just before you have to forfeit it for an archer, don't you? Use it before you raise it. There's a window in there somewhere, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I think he's going to try and advance that trap now, and that's going to hurt him because I think the runner is focusing on centrals at the moment. He doesn't care. He, he can let the corporation score agendas, uh, but... Uh, he should have kept the trap, for example, until he had four points. Because then he yeah, he's, he's, yeah, he's reached an awkward stage. He's got Project Atlas, but he can't discard Ghost Branch without. Uh, he can. But, but he, he can, but he's sort of got no use out of it. So. I would prefer if he actually used a Ghost. Uh, uh, that other was actually be probably more useful if he used it to grab him a lance at some point. Because he's really out of money. But that server is fairly secure, so... We may see an account siphon though. Yeah, I think it's hard to resist an account siphon here, because it, not only that, but it could potentially mean you can take another peek on R&D, because um, Corporation might not be able to res that. Yeah, yeah but uh, he still will get two credits from the uh, Shadow, so the account siphon is much less powerful. Oh yeah, that's true. Hard not to play account siphon when I draw it. <laughs> as soon as you draw it, you're like, you know, this is so game changingly powerful. I have to find a way to play this immediately. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember uh, there was an opponent I faced recently who, um, who on his first turn left HQ undefended. Ender in a remote. Mm. Punished him. Account siphon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All his opening money and, gone. Uh, and uh, the. Uh, with the new cards, it's going to be even more. Painful, for example, with the Esser uh, rearranging, it's you starting to become yeah. very, very mm. critical at the moment. Yeah. There's so many cards that trigger off if you run into HQ. For example, uh, we have the emergency shutdown. You have uh, the thingy. So this very good stuff. Or to um, dirty laundry actually. Unfortunately, that ninja. ninja by itself is not very useful. No, but yeah, I, I guess he just wanted to get something out of his hand. Maybe. I don't. I'm not sure if he wants to run 
on R&D on HQ without uh, triggering Shadow, probably. So I'm he's got he... decoy. The worst case, he can just chuck the tag, but and he's got another decoy in hand, so. True. So I'm suspecting he'll gain a credit now. Problem I think is, I... problem is Shadow is so expensive to break with the ninja. It's like five credits for this win for this winnie. Yeah. Would be fun if he actually goes like uh, discards the uh, decoy for the uh, shadow and then hits a snare. Ha! <laughs> yeah. Or that would be um. That would be game over if he actually does it. Oh, oh no, because he can choose to the scorch there, of course. Oh no, but it wouldn't because two scorch earth would cost six to play, so... No, no, look, if, oh, he, no, he, gets if, if he runs yeah. now, for example, yeah, he says, okay, I'm just going to see what there is there. But I don't think there's a point in running now, let's see, why did he play the ninja then? He's probably thinking about the uh, account siphon, but still not a good idea. Ah, oh, you played it safe, took the credit. Yeah. I would probably want to play something in my HQ at some point, but maybe he'll just uh, score that agenda. Yeah. It's not Wall of Ice, but the problem is it's... Broda does a break it so efficiently. Yeah, it's two credits per round, so it's not bad. Yeah, now he can take off the... Uh, he can... Uh, he doesn't care so much about uh, Siphon. He's not holding anything in his hand, in his remote, that uh, he can get through. So, all he, all the corporation needs to do now is uh, find the uh, one-point agendas and score them. Maybe with the Project Atlas. Yeah, that'd be. <laughs> that snare is coming. And what is he going to lose? Does it again? Let's see if he hits a snare. And there it is. Ah, uh, yes. Bam. And he's on his last click. Yeah, but he has a decoy, so it's okay. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. But he lost his second decoy now. And his account safe, so that hurt. Decoy saves the day. So now, what I would... <laughs> he doesn't even use, need to play that melange, take two credits, we're golden. Oh, come on. There's nothing to think. You're broke. Credits. Fill the call of the credits. Sometimes it's hard to just not slam that melange. <laughs> <laughs> So difficult. I guess he's just trying to evaluate the risk. Right. Okay. I, you're right. Playing it is it would be would be foolish because obviously you don't have any money, so you can't res anything in your remote. So if you do play it and the runner runs it, then you've lost it. So. Mm, true, but he can play it and take two credits, so he can raise that enigma. Oh, that's true. It's not a, it's not a big problem. And he has the ice wall as well. Of course, the ice wall doesn't do anything, but uh, it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. Otherwise, the, you're going to get run into by a sneak door, and you might lose it without any. It's better to have the corporate the runner use uh, inside job or something to trust your uh, melons instead of uh, something else. Maybe he's just trying to decide if he should pull something out of his deck. I'm not really sure why he'd want to do that now, but... Oh. 
sounds less frantic. Mm. Look, the corporation is broke. He's not going to do anything when you have like one card face down and three credits. You're going to run your arc your HQ to get two credits and then maybe just run that remote and see what he's finding. But it's unlikely that he'd think to play a uh, code gate breaker before running. Especially after you wiped his hand. And the other thing is, um, you know, John's had to just discard most of his hand to that snare, so in all likelihood he's gonna spend a few clicks drawing a few more cards. Exactly. It's a very safe bet to play that melange. Decided to go for a quick loo break. <laughs> I'm wondering, I have to ask him what he was thinking, why it took him so long to uh, think this. Even, okay. it's very low chance that the runner has an inside job after he wipes his hand with a snare. My job's not really a threat here because obviously he's got the enigma with that. Oh no, because he couldn't play both, could he? Yeah, he can just play an inside job and get his snare, but he's, he's going to be a big risk. And that's the inside job. But still. I mean, when a corporation player thinks that long about a decision, I generally assume, and particularly when I'm doing that, I generally find that I'm thinking about, you know, playing a trap, playing an agenda. Mm. So maybe he, maybe the time taken will just convince John that something's up. There we go. It was quite lucky of him to draw that inside job now. But uh, then again, he's only going to see a melange. So now the corporation can go like, okay, Project Atlas, I'm getting an agenda now. Yes. Or get another melange. Oh, uh, he only has probably one left, so yeah, he could do that. If he really wants to, he can do that. Uh, he doesn't have to raise anything. Being a rebel, refusing to use your new button. Mm, nobody loves me. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. That was a sponge. Yeah, it's okay. It's not a big deal. It was quite like of him to draw that. Uh, inside Zab at the last moment. And I guess he has been through quite a bit of his deck now, I and mean, he's got 24 cards left in his uh, in his stack. Mm -hmm. Having lost most of them and not seen a single inside job, I guess one was pretty much bound to come up soon. Yeah. Where's the sea sources when you want them? Yeah. Actually, he can, Wayland... he can pull out one now. He can fetch the sea source now. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, fetch the scissors. Hedge fund? Scissors? Scorchers. Oh, he can't fetch fund, but can he? He doesn't have enough money. Damn. That's it. He could sort of work. He could get himself more money. I mean, that's one thing that's always powerful in this game. Generally speaking, if you're not sure what to do, taking money is usually not a bad yeah, option. Yeah, yeah. It, it would have been a really good situation here to sneak or uh, to uh, scissor him now but he doesn't have enough money to do it. Project Atlasing. Maybe another melange. I'm gonna go with another melange or... Oh, okay. beanstalk, interesting. Unusual. Yes. Maybe he's trying to beanstalk into hedge fund, into... I can't get it. That's a weird card to pull. He really Going wants. Uh, what? Oh, so he is. He is doing, but he's not giving himself. No, he can. Yeah, he can. He can. Beanstalk. See, so he does have the money for the trace, though. Does he? Did he forget the compromise employee again? 
Let's see. He needs one. He only spent two. He needs to spend two extra. Yeah, he got it. There we go. Yeah. Well played. Well. Okay, that's tiebreaker. <laughs> the runner just tried to use all his money because why not? <laughs> At least he can say that he got an A for effort. So for the viewers, we're going to the tiebreaker because uh, the first match uh, went with three points for uh, Rybelkov and uh, we already started a Second match where we got the disconnection, but it was already a tie. So we thought that the fairest thing would be to consider this game a tie if Rebellikov won it and then go for the tiebreaker, which is what happens. And if you consider it's not much different from the other one, the only difference is that instead of uh, hitting a three point in the R in the RD, he hit a one point. Um, yeah, that is true. Oh, a break. Hallelujah, I could do with one. 